Hello there, everybody, and welcome to part 76 of Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Last time, lots of things happened. We have had a lot of things happen. We stopped Agil from destroying the world. It turns out that Shulk was already dead because he was being possessed by Zanza. Zanza reawakened the Bionis in order to destroy Makanis. The High Antia had been transformed into Telethia. And Melia's life sucks. And Shulk returned back from the dead with a new Monado. Technically, a replica, if you will. So yeah, a lot of stuff happened. But the most important thing is that thanks to Egil's final punch to the Bionis, it turns out that it left a hole in it. So that means we can go into the Bionis anytime we want to take on Zanza. But given the fact that he's a god and we're not, we're definitely not ready for that sort of thing yet. So we're going to go around and do a whole bunch of side quests just to get ready. This is going to be our last round of side quests for the main story because it's basically going to be inevitable that we're going to lead into the post game for these. But... I'm going to get as many done as I can before we reach a certain level. For this, I'm certainly aiming for a level 80 or 75 level cap. So that we can, you know, be properly prepared. But today, I want to show you what has changed around the world before we do our business. Well, our small business, but our business nonetheless. As you can see right here. At this point, anytime you can see the Makanis, you just get this sight. Very tragic that we can live in peace after all. Anywhere you can see the Makanis, it's just destroyed in a kneeling position. At this point, all areas of Makanis are cut off. You can't go to Makanis Field anymore. No more Central Factory. No more Agniritha. No more Makanis. Let's get an F in the chat for all the good music that we lost here today. But, more importantly than that, yeah, more importantly than a destroyed Titan, is the fact that Definitive Edition actually gives us something cool for Fiora. Anytime that you have either completed Definitive Edition or nah, or regardless of which, you can actually get Maynitz Monado as an appearance weapon. Just look at this thing. Look at it. Look at these things that are on Fiora's hips. They're so cool. <laughs> They're really cool. And this was actually a really proper treat, really, for Definitive Edition people. Because normally you wouldn't even get this weapon unless you were fighting Zanza at Makana's core. But now you can actually... You can actually see these weapons up close and they look really cool and they're like split in half because, you know, at this point, Zanza has both Zanza or his Monado and Maynitz Monado. So, yeah, we're going to break the universe with this thing, with this logic, are we? We're breaking the universe. <laughs> All right. So that has changed, obviously. But obviously, that isn't the only big thing that's changed around here. And this basically involves us doing a little bit of exploring. So, obviously, we're at Tefra Cave right now. But, let's head into Villa Lake and see what's up, shall we? As you can see right here, now that Makana's Core is done and the second battle of the Titans has commenced and ended... This way that was previously blocked is now available to us. And... Yep! 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 Level 80 plus enemies. Level 80 plus enemies are here. This is what they expect you to do. This is legitimately what they expect you to do. 
Well, I'm certainly going to be in for a grand old time, am I? <laughs> because, uh, spoiler warning, uh, some quests are going to have us going through this exact section. And I'm like, God help me. <laughs> God help me. Seriously, does a level 92... All of these enemies, by the way. All of these enemies, by the way. Without saying too much. They are much higher leveled than the final boss. I'm just saying that right here and right now. This is... Oh my god. Oh my god. Why? <laughs> why, man? I, I don't know why or how or who or what or when. But we got a heart-to-heart -heart here, so I guess it doesn't really matter anyway. Alrighty. The Legend of the Spider featuring Shulkin Rhine. Look, Rhine! This geological formation, it's incredible! It sure is. This breeze ain't bad either. Rhine, are you okay? You don't normally want to talk about geology and the weather. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm a bit on edge. Just tell me, just tell it to me straight, Shulk. Is it me or are there a ton of spiders around here? Yes, there are quite a few. Oh yeah, now I remember. <laughs> You're scared of spiders. Ryan, are you okay? You don't look so good. Sorry, Shulk. Mind if we take a break for a bit? That's not a problem at all. Hmm. I'm just trying to think when your phobia started. If I remember right, it was that time when... Come on, man! Don't remind me! As much as that would be true, no. I'm sorry, Ryan. I should have stuck that spider in your shoe. Too right you shouldn't. When I put my shoe on, I nearly jumped out of my skin. You should be glad it didn't make me scared of shoes. Don't make me feel bad. I said I was sorry. Yeah, I know. We were just kids back then anyway. Boys will be boys and all that. That reminds me. Do you remember why I put that spider in your shoe? Um, not really. You hid a caterpillar in my sock drawer. Did you forget? <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, man. Hey, Shulk, don't you have a phobia? There's something you're afraid of, but I can't remember what. It's caterpillars, right? <laughs> Oh, man, these relationships are just too funny and too good, man. Oh, my God. Why? They're so funny and th they're just too good, man. They're just too good. <laughs> that heart-to-heart -heart is one of my favorites because the best outcome is just the funniest thing. It's just the funniest thing ever, I swear. Anyway, uh, yeah, so just be ready to run from these things until you're properly leveled. Among all these monsters, because they just have to put in high-level unique monsters there, Musical Van Flair is one of them. So, boo on that. Boo on that. This is normally where I would be like, yeah, no, I'm going to just stick with regular grinding. I'm just going to be grinding up the old-fashioned way by just killing monsters over and over again. Not, no, no quest for me. No, sir. Because, uh, spoiler warning, some of these quests have you taking on higher level enemies than yourself. Like, even if you're technically going into the post game, which is technically where you are right now. But, like, but it's just like, how and why? And why do they expect you? I'll tell you why. Because the heavenly window is a secret area. So, yeah, Heavenly Window. Jesus! Heavenly Window. This is an area where Erratic Goliante. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah, these Gogols are like way too much. They're definitely way too much. Just like these enemies are way too much. Like, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that one nearly took on half of my took out half of my HPs. Over here is the Arachno feeding lair. Uh fun fact. This is actually the place where Ryan ended up when he was captured by those Arachno all that time ago. 
Yes, while we're running for our lives, let's actually go over these places. He went through the path of absolution, obviously, ignoring all these ruins of sorts. And where exactly did he end up? He ended up at Villa Lake. So yeah, we just took a whole lap around this place. But yeah, that's basically what awaits you in that very area. That's It's high-level shit. And of course it is. Of freaking course it is. Anyway, um, next place is uh, Eritzi. So, I wanted to take care of this right now because I actually ended up doing a lot of preparations for Colony 6 Reconstruction, obviously. And, yeah, I'll, I'll explain about all that in a little bit. But first, pretty obvious change, obviously, but Prison Island is no longer available. As you can basically see, it's off the map because Zanza sunk it into the uh, sea and obviously hit frontier village too but spoiler warning it's still available but if you take a look at alchemot's map you can't actually skip travel here you can still go there but i highly recommend against it because jesus 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 <gasps> Jesus, Jesus! Yeah, um, there are high level Telethia now in Alchemoth. Yeah, Zanza really did screw this place. This is the reason why all the Alchemoth side quests expire. Because basically, after Makana's core, Alchemoth becomes extremely dangerous. At the level where you're at right now. Obviously, it's not really a big problem if you're like level 90 or 99, which is the cap or something like that. I don't I don't know. I don't know, man. Dude, why? 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 I I can't. I can't, dude. I can't. Why? Dude, why does this have to happen? Why? Why, dude? I I Man, and guess what? There are hearts to hearts that we haven't viewed yet, so doopy doopy doop, we're gonna have to go here. And also, this counts for Eretz Sea too, because on some islands there are high-level Telethia here as well. God, God. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. That that's kind of like my one problem with uh. It's kind of like one of my issues with uh, the post game is that they expect you to do this like stuff with like high level enemies. And yeah, if you set yourself up properly, then you can take on these enemies. No problem. If you've got the proper gems, if you've got the proper skill links, like if you've got the proper everything. Yeah, true. But I'm not that good. <laughs> I'm not that good. I swear to God, I'm not that good, man. Just Christ almighty. Christ almighty. <laughs> okay, so enough about that. Um, do you want to know the reason why these Telethia are even at Eretzi at all? Well, it all basically has to do with the Hyantia. After Makana's core, the world has changed in more than one way. As you can see here, some Hyantia were able to get out. They were able to get out safely and... Some of them will even have quests for you. Such as Muriel, who is right here. And uh, I believe this is Talia. Yes. Hyantia, such as Muriel and Talia, were able to get out of uh, being transformed into Telethia because they are half Homs. I want... Uh, did you ever, did you pay attention to the cutscene where the, uh, High Antia were being transformed? And also, did you pay attention to the cutscene where Melia says that only ha half Homs High, High Antia have been 
safe. And possibly, you know, some others. This leads us to the affinity chart. So, up here in uh, Upper Bionis, you can basically see, or basically, you can kind of tell that some things have changed. In fact, a lot of things have changed. A lot, a lot, a lot of things have changed. Basically, at Arid Sea right now, uh, Hyantia such as Talia, Muriel, and Argentus, and Vidian, Tilin, uh, Kuralth, and Zane, they're now in Upper Bionis right here, which is basically Arid Sea and Valak Mountain. The Hyantia that you can find here are, um... Shaylin, Jarek, Talia, Muriel, and Argentus. And, and Argentus, excuse me. And if we go over to Valak Mountain's uh, Asai Tower, you'll be able to find Hyantia refugees here. Zane, Kuralf, and an unnamed Hyantia refugee are over here. Because their locations have changed... They'll oh, definitely... They're, they will trade different items. Flash Sheed Elf... What the heck is this? Oh, this is not even a good weapon, man. <laughs> oh, man. But, yes. Uh, any MP... Remember, any NPC that has changed locations have different items to trade. Yes. So, you want to trade it at a time like this? Yes, I do, obviously. And they'll also have different overtrades. So just keep in mind of that before Makana's Court completely screws up everything for the world. At Frontier Village, around this area right here, there are some refugees here as well. One of them happens to be a high Antia boy named Atail, one of the kids that we found playing hide and seek. Keep in mind, uh, right over here, this kid can trade you an Ocean Elixir of Life. All you need is this many stars of affinity with uh, Central Bionis if you want to trade with him, which I've already done. That's part of my, that's part of my uh, preparations, by the way. So, in addition to that, um, you can basically find the uh, refugees that are located around here. So, basically, at a Frontier Village, uh, I believe you can find the Hyantia, uh, Sien, Atail, and Don Argentis. Oh, the, the usual spot, because obviously that's what they are. <laughs> Switching over to the Sorol statues in Satoru Marsh, the Hyantia refugees that are here are... If I can go over to them, are Zell Argentus, uh, Rosiel, uh, another unnamed High Ante refugee that possibly no one really, I, I guess, people do care about. And if that question mark was any indication, that would be Scarlin, baby! <laughs> Scarlin, as well as Jarrell, but Scarlin, that's the more important one. <laughs> that's definitely the more important one, and he is found right over here at the place overlooking the uh, Cyril statues, which would be way over there in the distance, right where I'm facing. Finally, at the refugee camp, because this place just has to be depressing, doesn't it? At the refugee camp you'll be able to find Elior here, who is somehow out at night. I mean, I guess he's... I mean, I guess he's just gazing at the stars. I mean, way to keep hope alive, kid. Well played. Uh, where is he? Oh, he's, oh, he's over there. Okay. Ernest will still be here, by the way. He's He hasn't definitely changed locations ever since the world got basically destroyed. 
But whatever the case, uh, are there any? Yes, there are actually other uh, high anti refugees here too. Let's talk to one of them. Yeah. Why aren't my mummy and daddy here? Maybe I did something wrong. Is that why we won't? Maybe that's why they won't come to get me. Yeah. My new big sister takes good care of me, but I hope my mummy and daddy come to pick me up soon. God, this next part is going to be depressing, isn't it? Yep. Definitely depressing. Because this next part is rather unfortunate. So yes, ever since Zanza increased the level of Aether in uh, Upper Bionis, some of these high Entia are grayed out. Or, you know, they're just darker. Basically... These Hyantia are either transformed into Lethia, MIA, or dead. And those Hyantia are the crew, Neroth, Merlis, Galvin, Marissa, Val Valorin, Ruthon, Galdo, Galdo, Larshen, Donis, Kaul, Rakoth, Kaelin, Lesunia, Ariel, Lunara, and that's it. That really, really sucks. That really, really sucks. Because, yeah, this not only affects the story, but it also affects the gameplay as well. Like, you wouldn't even think about it, but... All these people that we've helped out, they're just gone. Or they're just here, but they're transformed into Telethia or otherwise. That really stinks. That really, really stinks. On to happier pastures, hopefully. <laughs> okay, Juju, I admit it. It was really cool for you to actually join in the fight against the Telethia. Okay. You're a little bit cooler in my eyes. All right. All right. So with that, uh, let's get to rebuilding the colony. It's been a very long time since we've last done any of, any of this sort of thing. But I feel like we're ready to fully upgrade at least two of these. I mean, I hope I'm fully upgrading two of these because I really hope this is actually a thing. Okay. So housing level four. This needs five Ponyo Hoof Shields, three Royal Volve Hides, three Warning Lamps, and two Retro Diodes. You can easily trade for the uh, Ponyo Hoof Shields with Eloqua if you have five stars of affinity with Makanis. The Royal Volve Hide can be overtraded with Zexit and Neonic as part of an overtrade. Warning Lamps can be traded overtraded with Natalia and Carlos. Who has level 5, obviously. And Retro Diodes can be traded for with Norara, but you need 5 stars of affinity with Colony 6. Or they can be found with level 3, with Colony 6 level 3 special. A fix on the solution. And speaking of which, <laughs> speaking of achievements, we got a fair few amount of achievements while, while I was preparing for a lot of the stuff. Uh, fix on a solution. Make good progress when reconstructing Colony 6. I believe that's for just 50%. Looking for trouble. Defeated an enemy high five levels higher than yourself. Basically, I had to fight a whole bunch of high-level enemies to uh, get the items that we need for Colony 6. Including the Gogols around Bionis Lake, which are like level 76, level 77, which I could very easily handle. And uh, get the party started. Deepen the affinity between all party members. Basically, just make sure you have blue affinity across uh, all your party members. Yes, at least blue affinity with your party members. And yes, I raise the affinity between everyone so they're at least on uh, blue affinity. I keep biting my tongue and I don't know why. Amazingly, Shulk and Fiora don't have Max Affinity yet, which is very strange. 
Okay, so that's done. Right. And last but not least is housing level five. So for this one, uh, you need two Vang star wings, which you can get from Vangs in Windy Cave and Tefra Cave. Gogol horns, like I said, I fought those Gogols for a reason. Red Frontiers, uh, Sword Valley is no longer available, but Rizaka in, in the Hidden Machina Village can trade you for these if you have five stars of infinity with Makanis. Black Citrine, these can be traded with Pepino at Colony 6, but you need five stars of infinity, so they're going to have to be a collectible from the Central Factory. And Rainbow Sarconias, we all know what we all know where those are. Those are in Colony 9, or you can trade with Dionysus, free of charge. And would you look at that indeed. <laughs> we got housing all the way up to level 5. For completing housing, we get the Oriental Glasses, which are Initial Intention 3. Definitely good for Fiora because she needs tension for Final Cross. Building a community. Oh my god. Oh my god. We know where another Xenoblade game got this from. Building a community. What the heck? Basically, we increased the population of Colony 6 to 100 people. And But we're not done yet with Colony 6 reconstruction because just because we have housing it completed doesn't necessarily mean we're done with anything of that nature just yet because we got ourselves commerce to do. Pronax fish meal, fish meal can be found in Fair Pronax on the Fallen Arm. Uh, Silver and Tall Fibers can be found by trading with Shilks with three stars of affinity. Sour Turnips are traded with Eloqua, obviously, on the Fallen Arm. Mossy Panels can be found by trading with Not, not Perik in uh, Colony 6, obviously, but they're collectible in Mechanis Field anyway. And you need two of them. Oh, 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 we got another one. Defend Colony 6 Elite. We need to defeat the M71 fire support near the Ether Planter. So if we want to continue Colony 6 Reconstruct... Actually, no. Can we actually... Can we actually do this? Uh, I mean, yeah, we can. Oh my god, we actually can. Okay, so, um, Ocean Elixir of Life. Just like I said, you need to trade w easily... You can trade with a teal with five stars of infinity with uh, central bionis. <sighs> they can also be found on Kyle Alexos in Colony 6 at the McConnell's Core. <sighs> Ancient Sardine Meats can be found with Throne Sardines. I'll show it off. I'll show off that location in a second in Colony 9. <sighs> Basically, they're found near Hazai Cape. Our core coils are collectibles in, Col in Galahad Fortress, but they can be found with trading with Kazat. <sighs> Fortune Feathers can be found in Aknaritha. And finally, Hail Fireflies are collectible on Bionis Leg. Oh, okay. For completing that, we get Titan Arms, a piece of heavy equipment. Oh, my God. <laughs> and finally, Nature. Oh, my God. We're just getting to this, are we? I mean, I'll show the stuff on screen that you need anyway, but Caterpillar Silk can be easily traded with Sylvain in uh, Colonies 9. Hawk's Daylight Spurs can be traded with Bosatrox in McConnell's Field and traded, over traded with Jarrell before the world gets destroyed. Oil, o Oil Oysters can be traded with Shilks on the Fallen Arm for three stars of affinity. And Quafaria. Quifor and finally, white plums can be traded for with uh, um, Prox on the Fallen Arm and over traded with Eloqua. And they're collectible on the Fallen Arm. So as you can see, we have most of the things that we already need for Nature Level 5, except for that one. I'll be getting to you in a second. Oh yeah, that's right. We got a mech on to kill. Actually, wait. McCrish. Hi there. Now that we have three stars of affinity with uh, Colony 6, look at this. A coin of fortune. Ooh, spooky dookie. No achievement, strangely, but that is 
um, an item for the other Collectopedia category. And there it is. Completely ignoring these Telethia that are near the freight elevator skip travel point. All you need to do is just to, to go over to this dude and or rather go all the way back to the actual freight elevator and lo and behold there it is the m71 fire support so um here's the kick actually here's the kick so the kicker of uh the post game is that even though fiora's ability of max storm is pretty cool it's kind of pointless now Basically, you're not really going to be fighting any more mech on unless it's for, like, a quest or something. Or unless it's on the Fallen Arm. So, this is basically why she has two Days Arts. One for mech on and one for others. So, it's really, it's really quite a shame. It really is quite a shame that we can't really use Max Storm for its bonus effect anymore. But, you know, it's definitely something. I mean, at the very least, Cross Impact is still a thing. We got another Shulk and Ryan heart to heart. Renewed Determination. This is only available after Makana's Core, by the way. Shulk, you remember that day? You know, the day we set out on this whole adventure? Yeah, how could I forget? It's unforgettable, all right. All that stuff happened all at once. No one could have predicted it. Makes me wonder, though. What if we already figured out the Monado before that? Could have been very different. I know what happened happened. But so many people have gone through so much pain. I wish I could have prevented it all. I know how you feel. But what's with all the negativity? I can't help it. Think of all the people we lost. Too many, if you ask me. You're not wrong. We lost Ego just as we were coming to an understanding. But don't you get the feeling that it was always going to be that way? He seemed satisfied at the end. Like he'd done everything he could. He gave his all for us. And he gave us hope. Of course he did. And to think, he had it in for us all and he went and saved us. That shocked me almost as much as you. But that's why we can't give up. So Egil's sacrifice wasn't in vain. We're going to win this one, Shulk. For Egil. And we won't forget the others who have given their lives. We'll make them proud. A new future in their name. That's our promise to them. And that no one will ever have to suffer through this again. I'm right with you, Shulk. That really does put into perspective just how much we've lost. Like, we lost Melia's father. We lost Egil. We lost Gatto. We lost all of those innocent lives on Bionis, including those in the Allied Force. But, yeah. We gotta keep on going on this fight. We gotta keep on fighting for them. I really like that heart to heart, actually. It's pretty, pretty good. Anyway, um, that's basically all we can do for Colony 6 Reconstruction for right now until we deal with, you know, that. <laughs> Plus, we also dropped a lot of money on that, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, I actually kind of forget which shops have opened up, actually. I definitely need to look back. I definitely need, need, I definitely need to look back at the footage, but... Definitely, these shops are are one are one set have opened up. So let's check them out. Hey, we got a machina. So what you got? We got well, basically stuff we don't really, basically stuff that we don't really need for anybody. I mean, technically, all the shops are technically a little bit better now. Like these weapons, they can do some. They can do some stuff, definitely. 
But I feel like I'm okay with the uh, weapons that I already have for right now. I definitely do. Okay, so... Uh, for... Fiora set, H Ether Goggles, Speed and Attack Goggles, they are slotted. As well as these sets. Again, I'm perfectly comfortable with the uh, equipment that I already have for everybody, so I... I so I, I don't really feel the need to change anything. But all of it is right here in case you want them. But what I really want is the uh, the uh, feet equipment. Saber drones. These give sword drones too. We're definitely equipping that. And as for our books, we got spear blade finally. Healing energy, cross impact. Second gear, Mag Storm, and Lock On. Definitely not that bad. Not that bad of a selection. And now we get this other shop that's right here. By the Snap On. Look at everybody just hanging out. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so I'm definitely going to consider these uh, weapons for everybody. I'm just going to show you that they're there just so that we can, you know, do that. Kaboom Biter. Oh, I might actually do that. Yeah, for sure. And we got unique and we got unique set of equipment for Fiora, obviously, because we have the speed four, ether four, attack four and power four. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool. It's going to cost an arm and a leg, but, you know. It's right there if you want them. Smoke them if you got them, as they say. <laughs> Smoke them if you got them. I'm definitely going to save. I'm going to sell some stuff and then re and then just go back to them. But, you know, I'm just saying. Anyway, as for Fiora's feet equipment, we got Artie drones, which give shield drones too. Which actually get which actually gives debuff immunity. So Yeah, we're we're that that's a thing and the Eden drones these give gun drones too so I believe we're just gonna buy this why not as for art books we mostly got ones for Fiora double wind shutdown speed ship guard ship and power drain again not a bad selection at all the colony six shops are actually improving I am extremely impressed with how far we've come in Colony 6 Reconstruction. Just look at this. Look at this. This is how far we've come in Colony 6 ever since it got destroyed. We're rebuilding it for a better future indeed. What? Which I don't think I've actually gone over these shops actually. I don't know if these are going to be like very outdated equipment. I'm just saying. But yeah, it definitely seems like they are definitely outdated Yep, it definitely seems like outdated equipment, all right. So, yep. <laughs> so the other two shops that you get from uh, Colony 6 Reconstruction, they're, they're definitely worth your while, I guess. Definitely worth it. As for art books, you get Burninate, Headshot, Jaws of Death, Ricky is Angry, Summon Earth, and... Uh, Cure round, which we already have, but if you don't already have them, then I suppose that's fine too. If you want to skip travel to the Fallen Arm, then don't worry. Junks will actually travel with you. And oh my god, there's just so many shops. I mean, I believe these two are available when you uh, yeah. clear Makana's Core anyway, so yeah, I believe that is indeed the case. They'll sell you weapons for, well, the final battles, obviously. They only have weapons, though, and art books. And we already got these. Let's see what the other one has Hello. to offer. Let's see. Well, obviously, they offer equipment and not weapons. But, hey, you get the three set, which is not really that bad at all. But as for the uh, drones here, the uh, Eris drones will give gun drones two. Lucina drones will give you cannon drones one. There's All of these are slotted. And Uranus drones will give uh, sword drones two. As for art books, 
You have Summon Aqua, Final Flicker, Summon Ice, Peekaboo, Power Effect, and Drive Boost. I'm going to pick up Summon Ice, Peekaboo, and uh, you know what? Summon Aqua. I'm just going to sell the rest of the items I don't really need off screen. And uh, speaking of which, there's just one more shop. I know we've been in shops already, like so many shops, but I promise you this is the last one because I kind of already forgot this one. Or if I didn't already forget it, then this one is probably only available after Makana's Core. So these knives won't really do anything for Fiora. This is all equipment for Fiora, by the way. But you do get the uh, same sort of stuff that you do get for Fiora regardless of whether or not you bottom fund those homes that we homes that we just got or otherwise. For the drones, obviously you have the same sort of selection. And for art books, it's basically the same story. Here's one minor detail actually. On the area map, Makana's core is is a location, but you can't actually go to there. It's kind of strange how Makana's core is just basically the one and only story area so far that we can't actually go back to. I mean, obviously because of, well, that, we can't actually, you know, do anything about that. Shame, but it is what it is. I just kind of wish you can explore that place, you know, freely because that place is really cool. So do you want to get those items that you really need for Colony 6 from enemy drops? Well, don't worry, because I have some pro tips for you. So, basically, um, right over here, we're going to show off what Ricky can do. Because his Talon Art is actually way more useful than you actually think it is. So, for example, let's just say you want to take on these uh, Royal Caterpiles, right? Obviously, at our levels, we can take on these guys no problem whatsoever. But... What if that wasn't the case? What if you just don't want to actually deal with these enemies? Well, that's where Ricky's Talon Art comes into play. Ricky's Talon Art Yoink um, sometimes steals items, as you can plainly see. So, whenever you obtain an item from Yoink, just run away. Run away and uh, see what kind of item that you got. Personally, it's kind of just better to actually It's kind of just better to actually just stick with the fight if you think you can take it on because then you have a second chance of getting The main enemy drop that you need like the royal caterpiles drop the caterpiles self that you need for colony 6 reconstruction But I believe this is actually more useful for higher level enemies like um, for example the uh, Gogols that appear all around colony 6 as well as the uh, Magnus Ardens that are around Colin, that are around uh, the uh, Gower Plane as well. So, as you can see, these Gogols are basically a little bit too high leveled for us. Kinda. I find it kind of strange that um, that uh, one of these is actually red and one of them's orange. So, yeah, it's really it's really bizarre for that. But, oh, that actually reminds me. That actually reminds me of something actually really funny. So, if you just so happen to uh, encounter an enemy that's higher than level than you, and you want to fight it anyway, uh, here's what happens. Opponent, no matter. Ricky, always okay. Leave this fight to me. Are you nuts? Yeah, are you nuts, man? Don't do that. I mean, I like Fiora. I mean, I like Fiora's determination and all that. But, like, one little detail that I really like is the fact that the dialogue for, um, that the dialogue for characters actually change depending on, depending on what you decide to take on at what level. Like, for the easiest enemies, they're like, yeah, this will be cake. And yet, for higher leveled enemies such as this, they're all like, are you insane, dude? Even when victory seems impossible, we march on! This one will take some time to bring down! Can we actually win here? 
focus understood so yeah that's one little detail that i actually really really like is that one and it can lead to some really funny stuff <sighs> I actually did encounter that plenty of times when I was fighting these uh, enemies off screen. But anyway, uh, back to Ricky. So, yeah, Ricky's talent art is actually really useful just for that one purpose. If you're fighting enemies that are higher level than you, don't worry about it. All you really need to do is just to get Ricky's talent gauge all the way up to, well, as high as it can go, obviously. And then, what you really need to do is to make sure that the talent gauge is all filled up so that Ricky can steal an item. Just keep in mind that sometimes uh, Ricky's yoink won't work like it should. Like, Ricky can steal strength, ether, AP, EXP, and sometimes it can steal an item. It all depends on your luck. It just really all depends on your luck and also RNGesus. Jesus. That's basically how I was able to get some of these items. Because, believe me, on Bionis Leg, there are a lot of high-level enemies that you need to get items from. Like the Gogols. Drop the Gogol horns. And right around here at Zack Sky Post, there's an enemy called Leg Tokilos. Uh, yes, right there. Leg Tokilos. These drop uh, Tokilos these chop uh what what item is that what item is that actually <laughs> is it a tokilos egg or is it uh yes tokilos king egg you need two of these one for colony six and one for a future quest so yeah that's how i was able to do it i mean i had to beat them the hard way obviously which is why my levels are a little bit higher don't worry no one no one's gonna learn any more new arts but, uh, yeah, that's basically the whole thing with uh, that. So, make use of Ricky's talent art, because it's definitely more useful than you think it is. Anyway, uh, let's get through all that. Um, as for uh, people's skills, Ricky has actually maxed out on flexibility, so I switched him over to Innocence. Because that's the only skill branch that he hasn't done yet. Uh, Shulk is almost done with Humanity. Ryan's almost done with Enthusiasm. Dumban's almost done with his. Charla's almost done with his. And Melia's almost done with hers. And uh, these are my updated skill links. So, basically, these are probably going to be the last time I ever do this kind of thing. Because I feel like I'm already all good with, like, these skills that I can. You can technically go through the entire game without, without knowing these existed. And you definitely can do that. But you'll just need a good set of equipment, good set of gems, and good set of, well, everything to get through some of the tougher battles. Especially considering the fact that there are five enemies around the world at this point that are way stronger than the final battle. We're going to be saving those really tough guys at a later moment because it's going to be very interesting. It's definitely going to be very interesting to see how that all plays out. Anyway, as for arts, uh, I put on Shulk. I, for Shulk, I put on AP up 5 for a reason. It's because at this point, he needs all the AP that he can get. So, at this point, if you hadn't already leveled up Monado's Shield to level 9, you might as well do it. Because if you upgrade your Monado's Shield to level 9, you're basically all good for the rest of your time here. But if you really want to just get through this whole game, just completing it, you definitely need to upgrade Monado's Shield to level 10. As for Ricky, let's get Bitey Buddy all the way up to as high as it can go. Um, you can do it to as high as it can go, too. We got a lot of uh, 
We got a lot of, uh, you know, event, intermediate art books. So let's get Cross Impact some love. Let's give Double Wind some love too, because I love this art too. And Spear Blade as well. As for Ryan, unfortunately, uh, we don't have any more arts that we can possibly give on him. So it looks like he's going to get some special treatment later on. As for Dunban, uh, uh, I guess nothing. He's going to get special treatment too. Sharla, 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 Sharla. Uh, Metal Blast, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> And no, not heat bullet. Okay. I guess nothing. And as for Melia, summon ice. I want that DPS, man. I want that DPS. And uh, I suppose, yeah, mind blast too. And uh, that will basically do it, actually. Because we've detailed all the changes, basically nearly all the changes that have gone through the world ever since the Bionis and Mechanis fought for the second time. We managed to upgrade Colony 6 a lot. We have definitely gotten stronger. And that's just basically the beginning. Next time on Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition... We start to do actual side quests around the world because that's what we do. See you guys on the next time. Thank you for watching and goodbye.